Hello guys, how you guys doing? Y'all see this red dress? Stop Gino, stop it. Get up there, get up there. This ain't your video, get up there. This dress right here that I have on, get up there. Get up there. You're not in this video. Y'all see he do this all the time, right? Look at this. Get up there and sit down. This not your video, have a seat. <laughs> sit. He always do this, like anytime he hear me turn on this camera and he gets a tuckle and a run. So anyway, this particular dress right here, that Gino, stop. This particular dress right here that I had, I made this a long while ago. And kind of when I, when I start doing my YouTube channel, what I would do is I would look at celebrities, like if Kim Kardashian was wearing something or J-Lo or whoever, Beyonce, Mary J. Bible, this is something that I can make. I will, you know, do my little channel and I will make the particular dress. So I made this particular dress. If y'all remember when Tammy Rivers was on Love and Hip Hop, Waka Flocka's wife, and she had the ponytail and Jocelyn went all mad and crazy and, um, you know, pulled her ponytail off and she was still beautiful. But this is the dress right here that I had got inspired off of Tammy River, stop, Gino. I'm, I'm gonna lock you up. So this was the dress. So when I, when I, um, okay. So my YouTube channel has always been like a place where I do real stuff. And then when I'm over on TikTok, I'm in a fantasy land. So TikTok, especially with the pandemic. You have the ability to put on music, your favorite artist, and get into full character. You know, I don't get into full, full character, like, you know, but sometimes I do in my videos, I used to just walk up to them like this, face forward, face to side, face to back, and then turn back around. Those videos was boring. They wasn't entertaining. Nobody really was watching. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, to be honest, there's a lot of beautiful women and beautiful men on TikTok. So you got to do something that will captivate your audience and make them be like, whoa, did this lady just do that? Whoa, did this lady just? And I love it when you see the real older women, 80, 90, and they've been doing the uh, Rihanna challenge. And it's amazing. It's amazing when you can just do that. So that's basically what I wanted my channel to be about like I could see something, especially something so the celebrities is man make wearing and make it cheaper on a budget. So that's how I kind of got into my TikTok channel, and I also had lost the passion for music after the death of my son. My mom, I never listened to music anymore, guys, because every time I would put on music, I would cry. It would it would become, you know, sorrow. And I started dating this guy, and he was had so much passion for music and when I start being around him and saw the enjoyment that you know he lost his mom and you know he lose no kids but he found joy in the music he didn't use the music to sorrow and pain so he helped me to get back into the zone where I was able to enjoy music I got back over there. I was able to enjoy music. So yesterday, I, I, I disconnected the other day from Instagram and TikTok. And at one point, I did it too because I don't like to get attached to nothing that I can't um, um, move away from. I'm open to everything but attached to nothing. Wayne Dyer. Okay. So a lot of times, and I don't think he even was the one that said that of somebody else. But a lot of times you get attachment disorders and you go oh god i gotta post a tiktok i gotta do this or you or you craving these likes and stuff so i never wanted to go about it and be craving likes and stuff like that like hey if somebody watch it they do if they don't they don't but i wanted to make it more entertainable i found a way to take some of my funniness my quirkiness you know and put that over and turn it into videos and different stuff like that give you something to laugh at i did one video of them for sure if somebody catch this, um, well, I was did a joke about my son's friend, 25 or whatever, or however, but that went <laughs> all the way wrong. You know, it was a joke, and I wanted, you know, people to laugh, but they took it and put it into a YouTube movement, like some R. Kelly shit, like I was a pedophile, a target 
underage boys. So that's when I'm like, y'all taking this joke and y'all going way too much. It said 25, don't bring it and said it happened this day. If you're going to take something, I said, use my original words. I said 25. I didn't say 12, 13, 14, 15. But at the end of the day, everything that I was saying was a joke. People that know me know I gave birth to two sons, Reginald and D'Angelo. They lived here in Minnesota up until D'Angelo was 15 and Reginald was 17. And then from that point, they didn't even do to finish high school here. They did high school in Illinois. And then they lived in Illinois. And then my son was tragically killed October 2nd, 2016 with his father at 24 years old. So um, that's facts, you know, real facts, real truth, you know, none of that, you know. Um, so, but anyway, um, you know, we make these videos, we try to, you know, give y'all something to laugh, have fun with and different things like that. And sometimes it can be done in a whole nother way. So I decided the other day, I was like, you know what? I did a lot of my Instagram and, you know, I do my little dances and do the little music and stuff like that. And my family that know me, they can always know when I'm good or when I'm bad. When they don't, when I don't answer the phone, they say, let me go to TikTok. Let me go to Instagram because they know me. She's posting, <laughs> you know, and she's in that happy zone. She's posting. So I was bringing my creativities into these videos and like this, I do enjoy being sexy. My mother was a sexy diva and yeah. you know, it's, I, I truly enjoyed like all of my clothing. Now, some of the stuff I make, I probably would never wear outside, but you know, I just challenged myself to see if I can make it. So that's what my channel was about. That's what my channel was about. And I feel like now that you get a lot of people, they take things all in the wrong way. So I just needed to disconnect because I think that you know, a lot of times they, they assume that we're seeking a man from, you know, the videos and the energy. And it's just truly a lot of us women, you know, some of us are in relationships. Some of us, some of us women just marry, but we're not your traditional grandmothers anymore. This is grandma. You know, this is grandma. I'm a grandmother of 13 grandkids and three of them is adopted, you know, but I'm their nana. I'm their nana. This is what grandmothers is looking like. And they get mad because you can put on some beautiful clothes and embrace your beauty. And, you know, regardless, you know, if, if some people feel, oh, your body don't look right. Your body look horrible. This, that, and that. There's a young lady on there and she had on something real sexy, but she was obese and she was dancing and she was having a good time to the music and this, that, and that. And somebody said to her in a the comment, they said, ain't nothing about obesity. Cute. So the lady did a response and she said to the person, ain't nothing about obesity is cute. She said, I'm not saying that obesity is cute and I'm not saying that obesity is healthy, but I'm saying this is my fat, my life, my journey. And this is the body that I have and I got to live with it and I got to be to accept my obesity, my obesity. I got to be to accept it. I got to be to live it. I got to be to love it. I got to be to accept it. So it's like, what, because she's obesity, she should crawl in a bag and go die because she's obesity, you know, but a lot of these people can be so cruel, so evil. So I disconnected because I'm trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing? And I don't feel like it should be TikTok. And I don't feel like it should be Instagram. YouTube was my original start where I originally started right here on YouTube and I was A. Marie from A. Marie Lace Wigs. I was right here and all my passion went into the wigs and it was full of passion. All of my passion went into the wigs and that's what I was doing and that's the journey that I was on and my passion for my wigs. But now I come to find myself, you know, when I lost my son, I didn't have that passion no more for wigs. I didn't want to do wigs. When you get people in there, girl, you gave up this, that, and that, and that. That's why I was way back then i don't want to be in the wig business no more i did it i achieved it that's over that's over people say will i teach that's something that's in me that'll never get out if somebody is serious and they want it then for god sakes you know i do it um because that's something that's genuinely it's it's in me it's in me it's in, it's in me it's in me it's in me so i can always create that over and over again but i decided for myself 
I don't want to anymore. So if y'all see me transition to reborns, but I went to school for dressmaking and pattern design. So I'm trying to refine myself, guys. And this video is I'm coming back to YouTube, my, my bread and butter. I'm trying to find myself. One channel I truly love was Misha TV. And Misha never be replaced. Never, ever, ever, ever be replaced. She was original. She was Misha. And I learned a lot of things from her and just her her passion for clothes making and her love for God and her creativity, her creativity and her passion to help everybody. And I learned to make puff sleeves for Misha. I remember I sent her a message and I was like, hey, can you do a video and show me how to make puff sleeves? I would say within three days, she would take our, our comments and she would turn what we needed her help with into reality at no charge. Isn't that amazing? So that's what Misha was able to do for me. So I, I, I salute you, Misha TV, and I hope your kids, your family, your mom, y'all all are doing amazing. Your mom, your wife, your daughter, your friend, she was amazing. It makes me emotional. Jesus talking about Misha, Misha, rest in peace. So I just want to find my niche and get in my comfort zone. And be able to be comfortable. So I love TikTok because of the music. And you get to dance and different stuff like that. And, you know, I, I have passion back for music. But I think a lot of times people take it the wrong way. Oh, you're seeking something. Nobody's seeking no man off of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. We're just bringing you guys into our home. And we're creating. So that's what, I, that's, that's what this video is about. I think I want to bring my passion back over to YouTube. And start back creating over here because it's like when I go over there, it's like I'm in a battle with the enemy and I'm not making videos to fight and battle with people. But sometimes they get so disrespectful. You have to tell them, watch your mouth because you're not going to say that to me because sometimes I've watched these people would take this YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that. But it's more or less TikTok where they'll see the person in public. And if you're not going to address them, I, 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 I. Don't play with me. They were in public with the same energy they do on TikTok come and try to set the tone in real life. You know, you run into these people. So it's like, I don't mess with nobody. But I'm not going to allow nobody to, to mess with me. I fear nobody but God. You know, I'm not um, an evil person, but also I'm not going to let you come up and say and do whatever you want to do to me. You know what I mean? You don't got to like me. We don't got to like each other. But whatever your thoughts is, keep it in your car. Keep it in your head or tell it to the people or keep bullying via keyboard. Don't bring it off in real reality. So I want to bring my passion back to that. I, I just had to disconnect from TikTok, guys, because I felt like these people are so nasty, so negative. And you just, you know, want to be sexy. Oh, where is your only fans, only fans, only fans, only fans. I'm 49 years old. Okay. I'm 49. I'm not a little girl. I'm not a little girl at all. So why would I take my book and get on some OnlyFans at 49 years old? I don't think so. Not going to happen. So, but this is a dress. One of my, I, I don't know if this was the first, but this was the one I was most excited about. That Tammy Rivers dress. That when she had on that red dress. So that's what, that's, that's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. I like to create and make things like this. I had an incident. I'm going to share this story with y'all. I consider her to be my niece. And she go, Auntie, could you make this? So she sent me a picture. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I look at it. And when we make something, we're not. I don't use a pattern. I got to look at the picture. And I got to be able to see it in my head, visualize it in my head. Then I got to be able to create that on pattern. And then I got to be able to take your measurements and bring it over here and bring it in real life. Okay, and she sent me the picture. Y'all probably seen it was the gold dress with the with the with the lace and the pink flowers, and it kind of tap around your neck like this, tap around the back, and with the, with the thing. So I make this with the sheer illusion lace, and you know it's sheer. So I meaning if the flower's not there, your boobs gonna throw. So I'm thinking in my mind, if somebody gonna wear a sheer illusion shirt, you want to make sure your boobs is completely covered, right? So you're gonna cover all the boobs up, right? So I sent it to her. She go, oh, no, Auntie, I don't like it like that. Take it off. Take the flowers off, this, that, and that. Uh, I don't want all that on there. I want it. And I'm like, okay. And I'm saying, if I take these flowers off, you're going to 
going to be naked. What's the point? Now you got to use nipple covers, everything that's going to take away from the beauty of the outfit. So I'm like, okay. So at this point, I'm like frustrated. I'm like, okay, I'm done. So I ain't even going to charge. And it took me probably an hour because when we use lace, people that sew, and we use fine lace, seeing the lace and that thread and it's so fragile using a seam ripper, it can rip all up. So I ripped and took all of the uh, things off the outfit. So kind of like all the way down here, whatever. And then she said, bake the neckline bigger. I made the neckline bigger. I said, you know what? I got tonsil. I said, you know what, baby? I'm done. Whatever else you need done. I don't even want your money. I said, you can pick it up, glue it on because I'm done. And a lot of times, if you don't sew, you don't know what it takes to make that outfit. And y'all head is real easy. You don't sew. So you don't know what it takes for a person that's making it on what they got to do to make that happen for you. Just like me going to the mechanic and telling him to put on the brakes. Oh, no, man, you can put the brakes on with the wheels still on. And it can go quicker. But that's my mind because I'm not a mechanic. And I'm thinking on how it should go when I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about because I'm not a mechanic. So how am I going to tell a mechanic how to do the brakes? Slow down and you let the mechanic do the brakes. You can't come in. You can, you can, you can help assist the person. So instead of holding the phone, texting, she should have brought her ass over here. Auntie, could you do it like this? Or she texting. Texting ain't going to get you nowhere. So finally I got it all together and I was just frustrated. So I'm done. So here you go. Whatever needs to be done, put some E6000 on it. I don't even want your money. Toodles. And she took so long. So she get it. And I put it in the door because I was dealing with tonsillitis. And when I'm sick, I'm irritable and I don't know what germs they have. So I'm not even allowing people to come in my threshold. I put it in the door, sit in the door, come get it. Whatever ain't right with it, wrong with it. Put some glue on it, get it done. I don't even want your money. Have a blessed day. In God's name, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Bye. You release. So she texts me. Thank you, auntie, for doing the outfit and everything. And um, this and that and that. But you didn't even glue the flowers back on. Something back, a voice thing. I said, baby, I told you I wasn't gluing nothing back on. When you told me to take it all off, it took me an hour to do that. I was done. I told you, whatever need to be done, you glue it on. One no more sewing. I, I, I damn near ripped the outfit apart trying to get it. I was done. She go, yeah, but now this and that. And she going back and forth with me like she's a paid client. And then still, you supposed to be a little niece, not my real niece. You still a child. Watch your mouth and how you talk. But this and that, and that. I said, sweetie, like I told you, I'm done. I'm done. First off. When you send me a picture of somebody else's work, it's never going to be authentic. The flowers you gave me is way bigger than the flowers that they had. But if y'all want original, go to the original artist. Don't bring somebody else somebody shit and tell you to make it and make it just how this do. No, go pay that person because they probably want $500 for that outfit. That's why you brought it to me because you didn't want to pay that. And I try to bless you and do it and then you just all up. I'm done. Take it. And excuse me when I get mad. And my people know I'm kind of, my family know I'm kind of crazy and kind of stupid. So, excuse me on what I'm about to say. I tell people, take it and go put it in your pussy. I'm done. I'm fucking done. Stick up your ass, your pussy, whatever. I ain't making it up. I got a potty mouth. I got a real potty mouth. I like to tell these little potty jokes. But that's another side of me we ain't even going to mess with today, okay? But <laughs> that's kind of, you know, me, my way of, fuck it, I'm done. So they know when I say something real crazy like that, I'm done. But she just was going back and forth. And I'm like, we got the solution. You wanted the flowers off? Boom, they're off. Okay. Now your titties showing. That's on you. Glue them motherfuckers on. Don't text my phone no more. Matter of fact, I'm, I am protecting my peace. Block. I'm not going to go back and forth. You're not a paid customer. You don't have the right to go back and forth to me. This was a charity project. You didn't pay me. I'm not even putting any more energy. I didn't get paid. I took that as, okay, this is all over type deal she all over the fucking place when she don't know what it takes to make this let her figure that shit out on her go go, go do whatever it is you want to do so it's like to me and the stuff i make i'm i'm protecting my space if i get people with that negative controlling dominating energy i'm not even gonna work with you this this ain't gonna work this ain't gonna work i need somebody that stutter we texting and arguing let's get a solution and say no because a lot of times texting don't work out talk to me and we can mingle together and make the situation happen but if you want authentic original go to the original artist do not come to me do not come to me because it's never going to be a sa the same as this artist i'm not that artist so i just wanted to vent today if some things on my heart and my channel finna get more personal because a lot of personal things i need to talk to y'all about you know i i feel like i'm needing 
an outlet. I told my sister, man, my sister was talking. I was telling stuff about the family. And my sister wound up sending me this scripture. And she was talking about gossiping. And I sent it back. And I put her, it wasn't a scripture, but I sent her a, a thing from Google. And I said, it says that when you're venting to somebody about a situation, about a person or a problem, venting and gossiping is two different things because you venting you getting something off your chest you not gossiping is when you tell me something and i take it and go right to the horse's mouth and say girl barbara said this about you yes she did and she talked about your husband that's gossiping but when you're venting to somebody you're in a safe space where you where you're doing an outpour and you're not doing it in a malicious intent to hurt anybody you don't want this to be when i say this between me and you take it to your grave don't tell nobody because it's between me and you. But if you take that and tell somebody else, then you're gossiping. I was venting. Know the difference. But you guys have an awesome Tuesday. Thank y'all for these 23 minutes and 64 seconds and talking to me. I'll be back with more hot topics. Bye. Okay, guys, here go the outfit. There you go. I pulled all the flowers off because she wanted them off. I guess she wanted to let it all hang out. So I pulled them off. And then on the end right here, you see the one on the left side? That's the original way. But I wind up taking them off. So at the end of the day, she can shove it. I'm done. Just want